Hi, and welcome to the sixth video showing you how I'm building a swimming pool in my garden. Whilst I'm waiting for the concrete to be poured, I thought I'd share some details on the pool filtration, sanitization, and heating system. I'm also gonna share my plans for the pool house building. Enjoy. So the last thing I did was tie the two st uh, steel fabric layers in the base and I also tied in all the L bars to the base for the walls. The next thing to do is to pour concrete into the base but in order to make the most of having the concrete pump on site I'm going to pour the pool house base and the pool base at the same time. In order to know the best position for the pool house, I need to understand where the equipment pad needs to be. The equipment pad is a small flat area that will accommodate the pool pump, the pool filter, the sanitization system, and most importantly, the heater, which we definitely need in the UK. So let's have a look at the specific equipment that I plan to use to understand how big the equipment pad needs to be. I'm gonna go through the equipment in the order in which the water will flow through it. First up, the pool pump and the filter. The pump is the first bit of equipment in the loop that water will go through when it gets sucked out of the pool. There are a few different types of pool pump, single speed, dual speed, variable speed. I'd like to go with a variable speed pump, which will enable me to optimize the flow rate and reduce the flow rate when I'm not using the heater. This will save on electricity costs However, variable speed pool pumps are really expensive, so I'm probably going to end up going with a single speed or variable speed pool pump in the first instance. So in order to know what size pool pump I need, I need to first of all understand a few things about the pool. First of all, I need to know the pool volume. In my case, the pool is 30,000 litres or 30 cubic metres. The pump needs to be able to completely cycle all 30,000 litres in around about six hours. 30,000 litres divided by six is 5,000 litres. So the pool pump needs to be able to pump 5,000 litres per hour. In addition to this basic calculation, the pool heater needs between 7,000 and 9,000 litres um, to be pumped through it per hour, which means that that basic calculation that I just did um, is good as a base, but I actually need a much more powerful pump, which pumps between seven and nine cubic meters per hour. This means that I'll probably need a pool pump that's around one horsepower in size. So once the water has flowed through the pump, it then gets pumped into a sand filter. A sand filter is basically a large drum that's full of sand or tiny glass particles. And as the water flows through and amongst the sand or the glass par particles, any impurities in the water or debris will get filtered out. I could locate the pool pump and sand filter just inside the pool house like I did last time. However, as the temperature gets hot outside, the pool pump needs cool air passing over it, I think, to keep it cool. So I'm also gonna locate the pool pump and pool filter on the equipment pad. I'll buy the pool pump and the pool filter as a set, and I'll leave a link to the filter set that I'm gonna use in the description. Once the water has been filtered, it will pass through the heater. There's lots of different types of heaters, I think, that you can use for uh, swimming pools, but I'll be going with a air source heat pump. Air source heat pumps are extremely efficient and they are very well suited to heating pool water as opposed to being used for home central heating systems. There are a few different types of air source heat pumps. I'll be using an inverter model. This means that it can run at maximum when I'm heating the water up, but when the pool water is up to temperature, I'll be able to lower the power output and run it at a much quieter and cheaper rate. The air source heat pump that I'll be using has a coefficient of performance of between five and eight. This means that for every one kilowatt of electricity that I feed it, I'll get about five to eight kilowatts back in heat uh, and power from the air. Heat pumps only heat the water about one to two degrees as water passes in and out of them. So if the water passes in at 25, it might leave at 27. However, because of the massive volume of water that passes through them every hour, they're great at efficiently heating the water up slowly and then maintaining that heat. I'll be using a 19 kilowatt inverter uh, air source heat pump and I'll post a link 
uh, in the description to the heat pump that I'll be using. I chose this heat pump because I need something that's going to be capable of heating 30,000 litres of water to a nice temperature between April and October. It can also heat the water possibly all year round, but we'll see how much it costs to run before I do that. I'll link to a nice helpful guide that will help you to choose the most appropriate sized heat pump based on the type of pool you have and the pool volume. And finally, the heater needs a certain amount of clear air around it, and this is to enable it to function as efficiently as possible. Once the water has been heated, it's then sent to the sanitization system. There's far too much to cover around pool sanitization in this video, and I'm by no means an expert, but most pools seem to use a basic chlorine system. I'm gonna use a slight variation on that, and I'm gonna use a salt water chlorinator. What this does is you take all of the water in the pool, you put about five or six sacks of salt in it, based on your pool volume, and then as the water passes through the sanitization system, the salt water, it then converts that salt water into chlorine, and then that chlorine makes its way back into the pool and then sanitizes the pool water. This essentially makes chlorine in one continuous loop, so you don't need to keep replenishing your chlorine. I'll be using a relatively low budget salt system. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description. I'll place the salt water chlorinator on the equipment pad, possibly under a small roof that I'll extend on the pool house. Once the water has been sanitized, it's then pumped back into the pool. So now that we've gone over the equipment that's gonna sit on the pad, we can proceed with sizing it. I need about two meters by two and a half meters to make sure that I can place everything on it uh, and give everything enough space. So ideally, I want to locate the equipment pad as close as possible to the pool. There will be a series of pipes connecting the pool to the equipment pad. The shorter that these pipes are, the less distance the water needs to, ha to travel between the pool and the equipment, which means less heat will be lost when heated water is traveling back to the pool. It also means that the pool pump won't need to work as hard because it's not pumping the water as far. I've decided to place the equipment pad next to the pool and next to the pool house at lawn level. There will be a low level hum that comes from the pump and the heater. However, the place that I've chosen to place this equipment will minimize this noise for myself, but more importantly, my neighbors. So in terms of the pipework and plumbing, the pool water will initially exit the pool via the skimmer and the skimmer is basically a rectangle that sits near the top of the water line and uh, at surface debris uh, normally kind of flows on the surface of the water into the skimmer and then that gets sucked via a pipe to the filtration equipment. Some pools also have main drains which sucks the water out of the bottom as well. I'm going to omit main drains in my design but I may go for two low level suction points so that I can uh, Move, reduce the pool water level without using a pump. I'm also going to go with a vacuum point which is a another suction line that is going to be placed halfway down the length of the pool about 400 millimeters below the pool surface. This will enable me to connect a flexible hose to that point and then I can use a, a sort of pool vacuum to vacuum the debris off the base of the pool. There will be inline valves on all of the different pipes to enable me to service different elements or identify any problems in future, but it will also help with winterizing the pool as well. So once the water has been filtered, sanitized and heated, it's going to travel in four separate pipes back to the pool. Each of these pipes will be connected to a return jet and these return jets will be placed at various points within the pool. I'll have a pair of return jets placed just next to the skimmer, slightly lower than the skimmer, pointing downwards. This will disrupt any water or, or debris that's on the surface, on the base of the pool. And then I'll have another pair of return jets placed on the opposite wall to the skimmer, higher up, and this will direct water back towards the skimmer, creating like a bit of a, a, bit of a cycling kind of rolling motion in the water. So finally, this brings me on to the pool house. The pool house is going to be a multi-purpose building that will be designed to accommodate pool cleaning equipment, chemicals, um, pool toys and all that sort of thing. The pool house will be located next to the equipment pad and will only be accessible via the pool enclosure. 
This will mean that I can clean the pool and move between the pool house and the pool without exiting the pool enclosure, which will mean it will be as safe as possible to make sure that uh, children don't enter the pool, leaving gates open, etc. The pool house will be two meters by four meters in size, and it will be built of four inch concrete blocks with a flat roof, maybe a slate flat roof, and it'll be rendered and then painted white. I'm currently in the process of preparing the base for the pool house, and this is what's been taking me quite a lot of time. I had to remove a rather large uh, raised flower bed, um, a small tree, um, I had to mark out the perimeter and then dig down a bit to put drainage stones in to ex ready to accept the concrete, but this isn't quite finished yet. There's lots of other potential uses for the pool house as well. I could put a small sauna in there, use it as a changing room. Obviously it needs a beer fridge and um, what else did I say? Yeah, possibly an outdoor shower as well. In other news, the ICF walls have arrived. So they've now been uh, packed away and put uh, under a cover waiting for the base to be poured so that when I need to start building the walls, they're ready. So the next steps are to finish the pool house base and book the concrete. As mentioned previously, this is taking a bit longer than expected. This is because I'm a dad. See you next time.